Well, Razorback fans, I would say that the Razorback football team had a great July 4th, all things considered, where they were able to get a few commitments, which we'll talk about that as well as a little bit of July 4th nonsense. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across all of Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. I hope everybody had a wonderful July 4th as I'm actually recording this podcast on July 4th. It's actually at night. And as you can tell from if you're watching on YouTube, I got my ridiculous American flag cut off shirt. I got my cowboy hat. Feeling very patriotic today as uh, we celebrate our Independence Day, which we'll have some stuff to talk about on that uh, a little later in the podcast. But I do want to say that um, the reason I'm recording this actually on the holiday itself is because I did get back from my lake trip up at Lake of the Ozarks a little bit earlier. So with all the stuff that was going on today, I'm like, I might as well just knock this out right now, uh, get to talking about it, and that way you don't have to wait until tomorrow to hear this podcast. You probably hear fireworks in the background. I hear my really annoying neighbor stepping around and doing things up, upstairs. I have no idea what she's doing, but uh, still, we're, we're getting it done here on a uh, really warm but really great July 4th night. And for those of you who, of course, follow Razorback football, uh, and you probably saw the big news that happened today. Arkansas got a couple of big time commitments this July 4th. And, and just to kind of go through the two of them that, of course, uh, were the biggest gets for the Razorbacks. Uh, East St. Louis offensive lineman Paris Patterson uh, committed to the Razorbacks. He's 6'6, 345 pounds. That's a big man. Uh, or I said Shay, it's such a big kid because he's not even, he's still in high school. He's still got a high school. Uh, season to play but uh 6 6 decided to go public with his de- uh, decision uh today and he chose arkansas over missouri lsu nebraska jackson state and tennessee he also had uh, other offers from iowa state and a few other schools there as well but of course he was recruited by cody kennedy and he has a three offensive line commitments so far in this upcoming recruiting class and the one things that patterson said is like i've just always admired coach pitt I like what Coach Kennedy is doing here so far, so it's a win-win. Uh, he was actually offered back by the Razorbacks attending camp in Fayetteville on June 22nd. This is all according to Hawksports.com. And uh, he's a three-star prospect, 492 nationally, but 33rd among interior offensive linemen. Uh, and the other one, of course, that Arkansas was able to get, which, of course, is a big-time commitment, is Tulsa Booker T. Washington High School. Four-star wide receiver Micah Tease who officially committed to the Razorbacks, 5'11", 180 pounds. And this was uh, the 20th commitment for the Razorbacks in the class of 2023. He was, of course, recruited by Kenny Guyton. And the thing about him is that uh, he's a bona fide four-star player. Uh, He had offers to, just let me know if you've heard of a few of these schools, Notre Dame, USC, and Alabama uh, were the ones that were really looking at him. But he decided to come to Arkansas instead, made it known, and uh, he's, of course, a, a big-time player that uh, Arkansas has been on for quite some time. In fact, uh, he's very close friends, apparently, with Luke Haas, who is, of course, another player that uh, Arkansas has been uh, big on when it comes to the commitment list there. And not only did he uh, pick Arkansas over a few other schools, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Alabama, Florida, Iowa State, LSU, Michigan, Michigan State, Mississippi State, Oklahoma State, Ole Miss, Penn State, TCU, and many others. So, uh, quite a, an impressive list there to get the kid out of Oklahoma playing at the wide receiver position. Arkansas continuing to try to add uh, some depth there as well. And a uh, big get for them and a big get for uh, Kenny Guyton and, and then the entire Razorback football team. So that's something that, uh, of course, they were all hyped up and excited about all the coaches were, rightfully so. I mean, let's be honest, anytime that you're able to, uh, to get to a lot of these big-time players, uh, you know, you're always going to be pretty excited about it and all the things that come along with it as well. But 
the thing is, is like I looked at you know these guys that ended up uh, you know choosing Arkansas, like, and then of course Dylan Haas was another one. Can't forget him; he's an athlete out of Bixby, Oklahoma. Uh, we know that there's uh, definitely some connections there uh, with the last name, of course. But uh, T.J. Metcalf was another one, a safety. Uh, he committed on July 1st, uh, so that was a big one. He was a three-star player there as well. So I mean, just a huge weekend, huge weekend for Razorback football. And being able to add a, a couple more players here, and you know, again, I've, I've always looked at a recruiting where you know it's exciting, it's fun, especially if you get players that a lot of different coaches and a lot of different teams wanted, and, and all of that. But at the end of the day, you got to get them on campus, and you got to see uh, what they're actually going to be capable of, and how they actually uh, are going to look uh, once they you know get to campus. But you know, it's great for the school, and it's great to be able to to get big time players when they're having offers from these other schools. And I think the craziest thing of them all is that Arkansas has 20 commitments already for the 2023 class, 23 commitments. Now, I know that a lot of people are going to be like, OK, well, a lot of things can change. You know, guys can change your minds and, and everything. And you're right. You're right. That absolutely can happen. But according to 24-7 sports, Arkansas has the number six recruiting uh, class in the country and they also are number one in the sec now let's be honest that's not going to stick that's not going to stay that's not going to uh be something that uh you can just you know be able to pin it and stop the count and arkansas is going to end up with that class because we all live in reality we all live uh in the real world but the thing is is that if you look at some of the other commitments like for instance notre dame who has number one class right now they had 19 commitments Ohio State, number two, 16 commitments. Texas, 18 commitments. Like you got guys that and teams that are already, you know, really building up there. Baylor's up there high. They got 22 commitments out of them. Uh, Georgia's right behind Arkansas. They only have 12 commitments. They have one five star and eight four four star. So they'll jump up. Uh, you know, ten, like Tennessee's kind of right there in the mix. Uh, you know, it, it's just so early. You know, it's so early to really say one way or the other. I mean, Alabama's really slacking uh, at 19 where they only have 10 commitments, but only two five stars and five four stars. So, you know, looking at that number, it, it doesn't really mean anything as far as, okay, well, this is what the, it's going to mean as far as who does what and where they land and where they're going to end up as far as the rankings go and all of that. Like, that's that's just a fact. But the point is, is what I've been so impressed by uh, with Razorback football and especially the job that Sam Pittman has been able to do in recruiting and, and, and then pretty much everything that he's done since he's been on campus is everything continues to trend forward. Everything continues to be a part of the culture that he's building. Everything seems to be coming into place uh, the way that uh, he's, of course, been big on it. He's wanting to continue uh, to be a big part of what they do and, and all of that to where it's almost like, you know, you can't help but be really excited about where Arkansas could end up as far as the recruiting rankings, which, I mean, I've said this before, recruiting rankings don't really matter as far as the difference between having the number 19 recruiting class and having the number 26 recruiting class. To me, that, that is marginal. That's so marginal. But there is a difference, let's be honest, than having a top 10 class than having the 26th class. Like that, that's a big difference. And Arkansas has kind of been in that 20 to 30 range pretty much every single year. Like there's been some years where they've been even lower. Uh, there's been some years where they've been just slightly higher. But generally speaking, that's kind of where the averages have been when it came to the final rankings of the recruiting classes and all that stuff, too. So if Arkansas is already sitting at this right here, this right now of where they're at in recruiting, let's just say that, of course, they'll add some more players because we know that uh, that's just going to happen. I mean, if they could add in a couple of another few big names, a couple of big names, like four star players and whatnot, uh, they could be right there in the mix flirting with the top 15. If they really hammer it home and really get some big time players, maybe, just maybe, they could be flirting with that top 10 ranking. But the thing is, is that even if Arkansas just happens to finish number 15 in the country, let's just say they get 15 in, in recruiting rankings and that's, that's where they end it. Who's not taking that all day long? Who's not being impressed by Sam Pivot and the job he's done all day long? Like, if you can get a 15 class, I mean, that's really showing the direction you're going. And that's going to really continue to wow some people when they're like, man, they must be doing some big time things in recruiting. And especially when you're able to take some of these recruits and make something out of them and continue to put guys in the NFL, all those things. 
people are really going to notice that. But how is Sam Pittman doing that? How is Sam Pittman and his staff being able to not only recruit at a high level, but get ahead of the game and get a lot of these commitments early in the recruiting process? Well, we'll talk about that. Uh, but first, I got to say, as the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier for you to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. You know, it's something to where uh, I know a lot of people that have found the jobs of their dreams and everything because of LinkedIn. I've also known employers who have found some of the best employees via LinkedIn. I mean, it, it's been that type of website where it can make such a difference when it comes to your career as well as your businesses that you have as well. You can create a free job post in minutes on the LinkedIn jobs search research uh, and network and beyond the world's greatest and largest professional network of over 810 million people. Uh, it's why small businesses rank in LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading comp competitors. LinkedIn jobs wants you to find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free with terms and conditions apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so we know it's been a big time for recruiting for Arkansas and Sam Pittman and the job that he's done, but there's a lot of work still left to be done, as we know, and they're going to have to put together a class and then recruit a few more guys. And, you know, we're kind of toying with the fact of where they could finish as far as team rankings go. But the ultimate question is, is how is Sam Pittman doing this? Like, how is Sam Pittman able to do the things that he's been doing with Arkansas and in such an early part of the recruiting game. Well, you know, I've, I've honestly thought about that and I've thought about, uh, you know, what, what it could be as far as the ceiling for Sam Pittman, what it could be for the, uh, the ultimate peak of what he could accomplish at Arkansas, because let's be honest, uh, Arkansas excels at many things, but football recruiting is probably the one sport that they've not even been able to sniff the top 10. Basketball, you've done it. You, you did it this past year. Baseball, you do it every year. Like you're number one, number two, number three. Uh, softball, you've done a great job in it. Track, of course, done a great job with it. But football is the only one, the only sport where you've never really even sniffed it. And so now it becomes of like, how are you able to do, like, if you're Sam Pittman, how are you able to do this when the NIL is involved and competition's at an all-time high, the SEC continues to expand, as we know, with Texas and Oklahoma coming in, like, how are you able to do these things? Like, how are you able to, as a coaching staff, be able to get these big time players, not only to commit, but to commit in the early part of the recruiting cycle? And there's going to be a lot of theories here. And I'm sure we're going to talk some recruiting uh, as the show goes on with some people that will probably be able to answer it a little bit more effectively. But what I look at it is that when Sam Pittman was even an offensive line coach at Arkansas, he was able to recruit, man. Like every single year, it seemed like he was bringing in multiple four-star offensive linemen. He did it at Tennessee, he did it at Arkansas, and even when he went to Georgia, he was bringing in four- and five-star offensive linemen, just right and left all the time. And when he came to Arkansas, you know, one of the things that I've always felt like was going to be happening is that he was always, of course, going to have a great offensive line, no matter what the talent level was, no matter, you know, how many NFL prospects that he had. The offensive line was never going to be a problem. That was another thing I knew firsthand. But the other thing I knew was that he was going to be the best recruiter and have the best recruiting staff that Arkansas has ever had. Even though we've heard it about Chad Morris, we heard it about Brett Bielma, we heard it about Houston Nutt. You know, those, those guys, those guys don't hold a candle to what Sam Pittman was doing because Sam Pittman is an elite recruiter. He has been at the offensive line. He knows what it takes to recruit high level guys. And so he knows what his coaching staff needs to have, his assistant coaches have to have for them to be able to recruit at the high level that he expects, not only out of himself, but out of the entire team. And see if he can identify that. And I think he has identified that. And he's had some coaches come in, which some of them haven't worked out, haven't recruited well. And when they haven't, there's been changes made. So it's not like he's just you know letting his friends be on the staff and then just paying him a check just to be there. No. He's paying guys to go out there and be like, hey, you got to 
you got to do your job. You got to get your side of it done. And I think that that's what's kind of set apart Sam Pittman and really why this is such a great kickoff to the recruiting uh, for a place like Arkansas and why these guys are committing so early is because they automatically feel the most important things. They feel that relationship. They feel the, the program really going in the right direction. They feel all these things. But it's, it's one thing to, to say, that, say it in a way like, oh, well, if you come here, you'll feel this. But it's another thing to show it. And I think that Sam Pittman and his staff have had a great and have done a great job of being able to back up everything that they say when it comes to what you get out of Arkansas. When you come to Arkansas, you're going to get this type of feeling. You're going to get this type of mentality. You're going to get this type of uh, you know team bonding. You're going to get this family culture that so many football players strive to have. But it's just being a, a, you know just a, a bill of goods to them. It's just like okay, well. I could, it may, but unless I actually get there, I'm not going to know. But Sam Pittman has been able to, to build that culture that I think a lot of kids respond to, and not only kids, but kids' families. I think Sam Pittman does that probably better than anybody is talking with the parents. Because at the end of the day, like the kid's the kid. The kid's going to go play football somewhere. The kid's going to go play football, especially if you be a big-time recruit at some big-time school. But who has most influence in that kid's decision? The parents. The moms, the dads, the uncles, the, the aunts, the, the grandparents, like everybody involved in that kid's life, those are the ones that are going to have the biggest impact on their decision. And so if you can start that and have that type of relationship with the families, with the parents, then the kid will come along with it and the kid will see that and the parents will be like, listen, we're going to love you no matter what you do. We're going to love you no matter who you choose. But Sam Pittman in Arkansas, we love that. We love what they've shown us. We love the, the culture that they have. And I feel like I know that if I send you, my baby, over there to go play for Sam Pittman and you're going to be so far away from us, I know that he's going to take care of you. I know he's going to be looking at your best interest. So I, just that alone, to me, is what makes and separates uh, Sam Pittman in Arkansas and why he's doing such a great job, which, we'll, again, we'll see how the continuation of the recruiting goes. But right now it's looking pretty good. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting sports needs and info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions over at betonline.net, where the game starts. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so for the final segment, if I can't stop itching my nose, I think it's the light that does it to me. Like, I keep thinking, like, everyone's been making comments about how I scratch my nose. And everyone's like, hey, you've been on that bug of sugar. No, it's not that, you idiots. I'm just, like, for some reason, like, the, I don't know if the light just, like, makes my nose itchy or what. Or maybe just me talking makes my nose itchy. One of the two. So, anyways. Um, but uh, I wanted to kind of bring this up since it was July 4th. I know we've talked a lot of recruiting and all that stuff. And, um, you know, you can see, again, if you're watching on YouTube, my crazy American flag shirt. and you know, my sign back there, it says back-to-back World War champs. Um, you know, I, I'm not trying to, to, you know, go political on anybody because I think politics uh, should be within the individual instead of uh, taking to social media or your job and just, you know, trying to get people riled up. I, I don't like doing that, nor do I like when people do that. I think it's a bad decision on their part for you to do whatever you want, but I just think it's a bad decision. Um, so I'm not going to do that for you or uh, go down that road. But I did want to say, though, um, that one thing that I always have appreciated it and one thing that I've always enjoyed um, is reading about history more so than anything. Um, I wasn't a very good student, as we all have established here on this podcast, but I always love reading about history and learning more about history and watching documentaries and, and, and everything about uh, events that's actually impacted where I'm at now, whether it's, you know, wars, you know, World War II or World War I um, that had such an impact on, on this country and the Civil War, another one, of course, that had a huge impact on, on this country and where it's at today. 
And of course, the war that started all the Revolutionary War uh, back in 1776, you know, under the Declaration of Independence and everything. Um, all of that, I, I just always have loved knowing more about. But not only that, but also learning a lot about other countries too. And where uh, so many countries have you know, done well and have found ways to be successful, but you know, what made the United States of America stand out? Why is it one of the youngest countries in the world that cultivated the greatest, one of the greatest economies the world has ever known and has become a superpower uh, in such a quick time frame uh, compared to other countries? And, you know, having a civil war on its own grounds and still being able to be as successful as it has been. Um, you know, I've always thought about that and I've always looked at it from uh, the perspective of this country and where it's how it's been built, but also looking at uh, historically other countries, too, and how they've handled themselves. And the one thing that I have always come to accept is because is that no country is ever going to be perfect because countries are started and founded and ran and ruled by humans and humans are imperfect and we're going to always make mistakes no matter how brilliant we may be or may think we are it's just going to happen so the, this country is never going to be perfect ever i think we all can agree on that um but the thing is is that this country has done so much uh for for everybody and for everyone living here to where like, I can't help but always just be extremely thankful for the way of being here and being living here and being born here and knowing that I have the freedoms that I do. And some people just find that so cliche and I'm like, okay, that's fine. But, you know, there's so many places that doesn't have free speech, uh, so many places that don't have freedom of religion. There's so many places that, you know, just doesn't provide the things that we have from tyrannical governments. Like we have it so good. To where not only do we have the freedoms to love this country, but the freedoms to criticize this country, too. And again, that's within everyone's right, but don't have to fear any persecution or anything like that. And so I've just always been really proud, really proud and really thankful to be part of this country where I'm able to do these things. I'm able to have a job and doing what I love to do, doing podcasts and radio shows like I live in a great state. I live in a uh, you know, I live in a great area. I just have so many things to be thankful for. And. Uh, our country and, and where it's at right now is, is one of the sole reasons that is. And our forefathers, the ones that, the, you know, signed the declaration and, and, you know, they were such a forward thinking group and historians that were able to see, let's take all the good things of how countries have become or how they've been ran and let's try to make it into something that's a government by the people for the people. At least that's what the intent was. Um, but, you know, just a forward thinking that they had to be able to, to build this into what it is today and just be so effective, which again, well, there's dark past, there's dark history and everything like that. We all know that. But I look at it as, you know, we, we learn from all the mistakes and we try to be better from because isn't that what life is all about? Isn't that what we try to do as humans? Any mistakes that we make, uh, we try to try to learn from them and be better from them and to write them. So I, I just I just really love this day. I love this country and I love being here. And so if that's cliche, that's fine. But I feel like it was appropriate today just to uh, say how, uh, how happy and how proud I am to be an American, or at least I know I'm free and, and whole song and everything. So, but it's awesome. And I love this day. Hope everybody celebrated safely. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll have uh, plenty to talk about on the podcast tomorrow and the radio shows as well to see exactly how people were uh, feeling after that day. But either way, it was so much fun. Love this country. Love this day. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. And also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.